So let's take a look at how to analyze keyword performance in Google Ads. Now, when you're in your Google Ads account here, uh, you need to select a campaign that's a search campaign. You may have other types of campaigns running in your account. You might not. Either way, you just want to, you can see this little hour or uh, magnifying glass icon. That means we have a search campaign selected up here. And then from there, I'll just go down to audiences and keywords in this column and I'll click search keywords. That's going to show the actual keywords in this specific Google Ads campaign that we have selected up here. And then we can start analyzing what's going on with these keywords, right? Now, your columns up here may look a little bit different than mine. If you're not seeing these same columns, you can just go to columns here click modify columns and add in the different columns so you can see things like quality score, cost per conversion, you know, the important metrics here. And there's a couple of things we're going to want to look at when we're analyzing keyword performance. Obviously, the number of conversions is important, right? Like is a keyword actually delivering conversions? For instance, this one is not converting, so it's spent $26, 8 clicks, it's kind of got a lower click-through rate, lower quality score. It's not really delivering much. Uh, so this may be a keyword we want to focus on potentially pausing. So if you, you know, if you see a keyword that's spending a bunch of money and it's not a bunch of your budget and it's not leading to any conversions, you can basically just come over here and switch it over to paused. So there's this little drop down where you can pause it and that will stop it from running in your account right but there's a couple of different metrics that you can analyze here like is the keyword delivering conversions uh, what cost per conversion is the keyword delivering so like this one detailing near me is the most expensive of these keywords here it's costing $31 where our average is like $14 right and there's, you know, you may have quite a few more keywords in here. I'm only looking at the top 10 keywords because they have the most traffic and uh, data for us to analyze. There's actually 159 keywords in here in total. Uh, so you can use this drop down selector to go to like, it'll, sh you know, show you 500 keywords or 200 or however many you want to see. And it's important that you have enough data to look at. So like this top keyword up here, car detailing near me, it has 47 clicks, which when you're getting close to like 50 clicks, that's when you're going to start to get pretty accurate data for a keyword. If a keyword only has eight clicks, then the next two clicks might be conversions. So this one's costing $26, but if the next two clicks are conversions, then the cost per conversion might be like $15, which is actually going to be pretty close to our average here, right? It's the law of large numbers. So the more data you collect, meaning the more clicks you get, the closer you're going to get to the actual average performance for that keyword. So it's important to get enough data on your keywords before you start optimizing them. Otherwise, you might eliminate a keyword that could have turned out to be one of your best performing keywords in the long run. And it's just a numbers game, right? So if there's only eight clicks, like I was saying before, and the next two are conversions, then it can, it can change the data here pretty quickly. So that's one thing you got to be a little bit careful of is making sure you're looking at enough data. If you don't have enough clicks on your keywords, you might try expanding the date range. So you can see I've actually selected more than a month of data here just so we can get a better sense of what's actually going on with these keywords. And then at that point, we can start digging in and analyzing the number of conversions that are coming from each keyword, the cost per conversion, so how much is it actually costing us to get a lead, the conversion rate, so this one's actually, well, most of these are doing quite well, 30 34% conversion rate. This one's almost 40% conversion rate, which means out of 10 people that that click on this keyword in our campaign, we're getting four leads out of it, which is fantastic, right? <laughs> Typical conversion rate online is like 3% or something like that. <laughs> so it's like, 
more than 10x the average for uh, you know like a website online which is which is great we can see how much budget is being spent on this specific keyword so that's gonna be the cost the number of clicks how many times it's showing up in the search results so that's the impressions here as well as the click-through rate which is just uh, this number divided by this number so it's how many clicks you get over how many impressions or maybe it's the other way around but it's basically looking at these two numbers and that's going to give us our click-through rate and then the cost per click this is pretty important this is it largely determined by the quality score now if we hover over a quality score here it's going to show us exactly what the quality score is so if you're not sure of like what conversion rate is or what impressions are then all you have to do is hover over these columns and it's going to give you a little definition here to define what it actually is so that you can better understand what's going on but if we look at quality score it's how relevant our ads keywords and landing pages are to a person who sees our ad in layman's terms <laughs> how relevant is the setup for what that person is looking for so if somebody's searching for car detailing near me and we're showing them a page that talks about mobile detailing it might not be very relevant so that's going to lower our quality score and then you can see here that the higher your quality score is typically that leads to a lower cost and better ad positioning so if we have a really high quality score um, well I'm not seeing any super high quality scores here but like 5 out of 10 is going to be better than 3 out of 10 obviously and so these are likely to lead to a lower cost per click and our ads are going to show higher up in the search results so if you're number one in the ads on Google when somebody does a search you're likely to get a higher click-through rate lower cost per click higher quality score etc and that's kind of the name of the game here it's all about congruency so if someone's searching for mobile detailing we want our ad to talk about mobile detailing and then the page that they land on after they click on our ad should also talk about mobile detailing if we've got all of that set up properly then we're gonna see a pretty high click-through rate relatively low cost per click a high quality high quality score and that's ultimately gonna lead to a lower cost per conversion and more conversions from the amount of budget that's being put towards that specific keyword that's kind of the basics now if you've set things up the right way from the beginning and everything's highly congruent most of this should actually be performing quite well right out of the gate <clears throat> excuse me so you shouldn't need to do tons of optimization to your keywords however there's typically stuff that can be refined as you go no matter what so you just kind of let the data show you what needs to be done one thing that's jumping out at me is this keyword in particular it's got eight clicks here we'd probably want to let it run to get maybe like 15 16 maybe even 20 clicks before we make any changes but it's costing almost twice as much for a lead from this keyword versus any other keyword uh, that we or I should say from based on our average it's costing about twice as much but this is only part of the picture the keywords that we're putting in here are not necessarily the actual terms that people are using when they click on our ads this can be a little bit confusing but <clears throat> excuse me we're using exact match keywords here and there are different match types phrase match rec saying broad match is recommended <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend using broad match I typically like to start with exact match then move up to phrase match broad match is kind of way down the line we don't necessarily have time to go into all of these but exact match is going to be the most narrow targeting so by starting with exact match we're only gonna have our ad show up if somebody is searching something that has almost the same meaning as what we've put into this keyword here so car detailing near me might also show for like car detailer near me right which is a variation of this keyword but it basically means the exact same thing and to see those search terms we would just come over here under the insights and reports if you click this little drop down 
you're going to see the search terms option right here. And when you click on that, it's going to show the actual search terms, meaning like what is the term that somebody actually put into Google when they found our ads. And so we can see here that it is uh, showing car detailing near me, near me, which is firing from this keyword that we were just looking at, and then mobile detailing near me, which is firing from this keyword, mobile car detailing Phoenix, which is mobile. It's basically showing exactly what we're advertising across here, but there may be some variants. So you can see this one's slightly different, mobile car detailing Goodyear AZ but our keyword is actually mobile car detailing Goodyear. So that's slightly different. They added the AZ at the end, right? Same thing with this one. This keyword is car detailing that we're advertising. You know, we have it set up as a keyword, but the actual search term that's firing is car detail, which might not perform quite as well as car detailing, but that keyword is also firing car detailing so there's this slight variation that's a little bit different that it's also um, allowing our ads to show up on. And given that this is showing the actual terms that people are searching for when they're clicking on our ads, this, is tip ten, this tends to be where I recommend people start with optimizing their keywords, which is actually, you're, you're actually uh, optimizing your search terms, not keywords necessarily, but that they are keywords in a sense. So it's, I know it's a little bit confusing the way this is all set up, especially if you're new to this. But that being said, we were showing, or we were seeing that there's this one keyword, um, car detailing near me, that seems to not be doing all that great. And we're seeing that same thing over here. It's not car detailing near me. It's actually detailing near me. It's costing $31, whereas these are 11, 13, 8, 11, 17, <clears throat> more or less 8, 15. So this keyword just doesn't seem to be doing all that great. Now, again, it's only got eight clicks, so we'd probably want to let it get a little bit more traffic before we decided to ax it or eliminate it, remove it. Um, it also has a pretty low conversion rate compared to the rest of these terms. But if we wanted to get rid of this keyword, meaning we don't want our ads to show up when somebody searches this exact term anymore, the way we would do that <clears throat> is just by adding a negative keyword. So if you click add as negative keyword, then that's going to allow you to prevent your ads from showing when that keyword is searched, right? And it's pretty straightforward. You just click add as negative keyword. And by default, because we're using exact match targeting for the keyword, it's going to add the negative keyword as exact match. That's typically what I would recommend doing is with these brackets around it, it means it's gonna be added as an exact match keyword. That's going to essentially prevent this exact keyword from causing our ads to show up on Google. The other thing you have to be aware of is that you can add negative keywords at the ad group level, the campaign level. You can even create a list. I typically recommend just adding it at the campaign level because if you don't want it to cause your ads to show up, then you know you don't want it to cause your ads to show up on this keyword. So you, you, it doesn't matter what ad group it's in, you just don't want it to be firing in most cases. So I typically just add it at the campaign level all you would do is click save here, and then that's going to prevent that keyword from causing your ads to show up when somebody searches for this exact keyword. Of course, you want to make sure to go through and check the rest of your keyword or search terms, which there's actually a lot of them. There's like 361 here. Again, we want to make sure we have enough data though. So most of these search terms are not going to have enough data to really analyze properly. So you might need to let your ads run for quite a while before you're going to be able to see enough data to know exactly what's going on with each of these terms. But over time, you'll start to see trends and get a sense of like what's working, what's not working. The idea is to just eliminate wasteful spending, right? So if this keyword is costing $30 per conversion or this search term is costing $30 per conversion, but some of these are only costing $7 you know, we could recoup 
some of that budget, put it towards keywords that are only costing $7 to get a conversion, which is going to increase the number of conversions we get, increase the number of sales we get, which is going to drive profitability up and up and up as time goes on. So that's basically it. I hope this was helpful. If there's anything you did have questions about, don't hesitate to reach out. Just drop your questions in the comments section down below, and I'll be sure to get back to them there. Look, if you're the type of person that just doesn't even want to deal with Google Ads anymore, <laughs> then you can always reach out to me. Uh, my company is Missoula SEO Geek. I'll leave a link to my website down below, but we do manage Google Ads for different companies and different industries, and you can come learn about what we do, what makes us unique. You can even read some of the testimonials from some businesses that we've taken from zero to over a million in revenue like this one here and really just see that you know this is the type of thing that's going to explode your business growth so feel free to reach out you can always give us a call or contact us through our website and look forward to working with you